Hi, the topic of today's screencast is functions. Uh, so in this next few minutes, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to this important topic. So the first question that we might ask is, what is a function? And there's really two answers uh, to this question. First of all, from a semantic or from a problem-solving point of view, we want to think about functions as an important problem-solving strategy. So when we have a big problem, one of the ways that we solve a big problem is by breaking that big problem up into smaller chunks. And these small chunks we can often put together as something called a function. And so to solve the big problem, we might write several smaller functions and then put them together to solve the larger problem. From a semantic, from a syntactic point of view, though, or from a programming point of view, uh, a function is simply nothing more than a named sequence of statements that belong together. All right, so the syntax for creating a function looks like this, and part of this is going to look pretty familiar to you. We have the keyword def followed by a name followed by parentheses and some parameters. and then a colon, and then we're going to indent, and then we have some statements here. And notice that these statements are all indented to exactly the same level. So part of this should look quite familiar to you be because it's similar to loops, where all of the statements that are a part of this larger group uh, are indented. Now, It's important to remember that any of these statements that we have indented here can be any of the statements that we've already talked about. So it could be a for statement, it could be an assignment statement, it could be any kind of statement that we've talked about in class so far. So that's one thing. The second thing that we want to talk about here briefly is these parameters. And there's a couple of important vocabulary words that we need to know. So the parameters, first of all, parameters are how we communicate to a function the important information that they need to do their job. And we'll look at an example of what I mean by that in just a second. But when we're defining a function, we call the names that we give to these parameters here, we call those the formal parameters. When we actually use the function later on in our program, the parameters that we pass to the function, we call those the arguments, just like we have arguments to the range function. Uh, we had uh, arguments to the forward method of the turtle, or to the right or the left method of the turtle. So we call those arguments, or sometimes we call those the actual parameters. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of using a function. So let's go back to our uh, to our square drawing problem. And what we're going to do here is we're going to write a function called draw square. Now this draw square function needs two pieces of information in order to do its job. It needs a turtle and it needs to know what size to make the square. So we have two, two formal parameters. And those formal parameters are t, which will be a reference to a turtle, and sz, which will be the size of the square. And so you can see that we, that we make use of that over here in the actual function. So t gets used as the turtle that goes forward and turns left, and sz is used as the amount that we want to go forward. Okay. Now, what's an, another important thing to remember about functions is that when we execute the def statement, we're not actually drawing a square yet. We're just creating the mechanism so that we can later draw a square. In fact, in this program, you'll see we don't actually get around to drawing a square until we get down here to line 15, where we call the draw square function. So it's important to remember that distinction between defining a function using a def statement and calling a function down here. 
Now you'll see down here we have the actual parameters of Alex. So Alex is a turtle that we've created here. Alex equals turtle.turtle .turtle, and 50 is the size. So if we run this function, you'll see that we'll simply draw a square of size 50. Okay. Now if all we wanted to do was draw one square, drawing a, creating a draw square function probably isn't that useful. But let's take a look at uh, this next example where we're going to draw a couple of squares. So once again we have our draw square function just like we had in uh, Active Code 1, but down here we see we'll draw a square using Alex of size 50 uh, at the beginning position. Then we'll take Alex's pen up, have him go to 100-100, put the pen down, and we'll draw another square, and this time we'll draw a square of size 75. Now see already we've saved ourselves some work because we haven't had to retype and reuse that for i in range 4 pattern for drawing the square. We've got it here in the draw square function uh, and we can use it in many different places in our, in our program. So let's run that and you'll see there's one square and there's two squares. Now the last example in this in this section is is kind of interesting and rather than just simply drawing a black square we'll go back to our pattern of drawing a multicolored square and you'll see that what we're going to do is we're going to actually put this function call inside a for statement so here we're going to draw 15 multicolored squares and before we draw the next square you'll see we're going to have test turn to the right and move forward slightly. All right, so I'm not going to run this as a part of the video. You can uh, you can stop the video now when I'm uh, done speaking, and you can run it and you can watch the results for yourself.